Welcome back to our demand and supply discussion where we're talking about the efficiency of markets and how government intervention uh, will affect this efficiency. Uh, but we left off talking about consumer surplus. We're going to shift gears, talk about the producers. Uh, so concepts will be pretty similar to the consumer side. It's just now we're talking about what happens to the sellers. How much value do they get out of the transaction? Our supply curve shows the producer preferences for selling the products. And what it shows is really a willingness to accept. Like, what's the, what's the minimum the producer needs to sell the product? If, as a producer, you get more than the minimum amount you'd need to sell the product, you'd call that producer surplus. Question I'll ask everybody here to pause this and think, have you ever received producer surplus? So take a moment and pause and try to figure out, take maybe one minute, try to think what, what's a case where you might have received producer surplus, where you had something to sell and you received more than the minimum that in, would have induced you to sell that product. Um, I'm guessing most of you have, have had producer surplus and really if you've worked at a job, you probably have. The question I'd ask, I mean, think about whatever job you've worked. Think about the best job you've ever worked. Uh, think of the job you worked at, you know, that you either thought was best for whatever reason. You liked it, you made a lot of money at it, whatever. Let's say your boss comes up to you and says, we just, we are not, we can't pay you as much as we were paying you and survive anymore. So if you want to keep working here, you're going to have to take a 25 cent an hour pay cut or a 50 cent an hour pay cut, or maybe even a dollar an hour pay cut, uh, would you still stay at the job? If for any of those numbers you'd say, yes, yeah, I still would have worked there, uh, then you receive producer surplus, right? And it's certainly my hope um, as somebody who's educating those who are about to, you know, look at college degrees, is that when you get your first job offer, I hope there's a whole lot of producer surplus in it for you. That you love what you're doing, that you find a job, and they are, and you think, you know what, if I had to, if, if the worst case is I get a job at, I, I, I'd take 20000 a year if that's all I could get because I would do it. And somebody comes around and offers you 50000 a year. That would be awesome. So, uh, you know, hopefully you've received producer surplus in the past, and, you know, it's our hope as professors that when you go out and get a job, get a whole lot of producer surplus. That would be, that's a really good thing. So, how do we think about modeling producer surplus? Well, cost, the value of everything a seller must give up to produce a good, like opportunity cost. You know, you could think about this as actual things you have to expend money on, but also your time, right? Uh, if you're gonna take a job, you know, if you're giving up your time, it may not cost you anything to give up your time, except there's an opportunity cost is very real, right? There's other things you could do with your time other than working. So the cost of all resources used to produce a product, including the value of a seller's time. So this example, there's three people who sell their services in the lawn cutting business. And this is really their minimum willingness to accept to take a job. You have one person who only needs $10, right? Their time isn't very valuable. Uh, another 20 and another 35. Well, what would induce somebody to sell his or her service? You know, Any time that you can get more than the minimum willingness to accept or the, willing, the minimum cost, right? Jack's cost is 10, so you start to offer 10 or more, Jack will be willing to sell the service. Janet's cost is 20, so if it's 20 or more, Janet will offer her service. And Chrissy, it's 35. So 35 is the, is the Chrissy's measure. Um, willingness to sell, willingness to accept, right? It's the minimum willingness to accept before you're willing to sell the product. And for anybody who's worked, you, know, you probably haven't thought about it in this exact way, but, but I'm, I'm sure you've put some thought into it. Like, is it worth it for me to work? Do I really want to work another couple hours this week or not? Right? You know you get more money, but there's a cost to your time, right? Uh, for most people, work isn't the best way to spend time. Like, there's other things to do that are a little bit more fun. 
derive the supply schedule from the cost data. I, and I want you to try this on your own before we do it together. So go ahead and pause it and try to fill out, you know, put this chart in your notes and try to fill out this chart. Okay, I hope you paused it. Zero to nine dollars, none of these three would work for that, that amount of money, right? Jack, who's got the lowest willingness to sell, needs at least ten dollars to get into the market. So once it hits ten, Jack is now willing to provide his service. Anything from 10 to 19, Jack is happy to come in and provide a service. Uh, you have to get to 20 before you have uh, two people who are willing to supply their services. Janet is willing to supply once the price hits 20. And Chrissy won't jump into the market until the price is at least $35. So this is our supply schedule. We know from our supply schedule we can convert it into a supply curve, quantity on the x-axis, price on the y-axis. And this is the supply curve that, you know, it's kind of, as we said before, it's like a step supply curve because there's so few producers, it's not going to look smooth like the supply curves that we, you know, we typically graph. So if the price is anywhere from zero to nine. How is that represented on our supply curve? Well, it's by this area here. Price from 10 to 19, all of a sudden the quantity is one. Price of 20 to 34, now two people are willing to supply the product or the service. And 35 or more, three people willing to supply the service. So at each quantity, the supply curve gives you the cost to the marginal seller, right? The marginal seller for one unit is Jack. He's the only person who's selling. He needs at least $10. If it drops below 10, Jack drops out of the market. At a price of 20, Janet is the marginal seller. She'll drop out of the market if it drops below 20. Uh, any price above 35, Chrissy is in. If it drops below 35, Chrissy drops out of the market. That's who we, what we'd refer to as the marginal seller in this case. So what's our producer surplus? Uh, it's the difference between the amount a seller is paid and the amount the seller needs to be paid. So the amount the seller is paid for a good minus the cost for the good, as they refer to it. I think I like to, instead of saying cost, um, I think it's thinking the minimum they need to sell the product. So we have the, the cost for these three or their minimum amount they, they need to get into the market. So what happens at a price of $25? Well, Jack definitely is going to sell the product and is pretty happy if he can get a price of $25, right? At a price of $25, sorry, at a price of $25, Jack gets $15 in producer surplus, represented by the shaded area on this graph. If uh, if it's $25, well, Jack gets $15. Janet's also happy to provide the service, right? $15, Jack definitely is in there and is thrilled and he gets $15 in producer surplus. But Janet's still happy to get in there. She needs $20 to be induced into the market, but for $25, she gets $5 in producer surplus. So the total producer surplus is going to be $20, the reason Chrissy isn't going to sell the product. At a price of 25, Chrissy won't sell her service or product. She needs at least $35. Producer surplus will then be the total of Jack's producer surplus and Janet's producer surplus, 15 plus 5, 20, represented by that shaded area on the graph. So the total producer surplus, it's the area above the supply curve but below the price. So the total producer surplus above the supply curve, below the price that you see in the market. Uh, <clears throat> once again, this is more of a step supply curve, but once we see um, a smooth supply curve, we'll be seeing the exact same trend in that case.